3D printing, it can be an overwhelming hobby when you're on the outside looking in. From printing D&D miniatures, to household items, to even life-changing prosthetic limbs, the possibilities of 3D printing are limitless. It's not just a passive hobby though, it's a scientific and technical process that needs to be treated with respect. But that doesn't mean it needs to be a daunting hobby to take up if it's something you're really interested in starting. So I've put together this video in order to show you my process to printing, tips I've picked up from the mistakes I've made, and how as an absolute beginner to the world of 3D printing, you can get yourself safely set up to start printing whatever your heart desires. Should you buy a 3D printer? If you want to paint your own minis and literally anything you can create, then yes. SLA or FDM, what printer is best? Well, FDM uses coils of filament and is safer, more reliable, and doesn't produce the same fumes and smell that SLA resin printers do. However, it doesn't nearly get the same level of detail and accuracy that resin can create. It leaves very obvious lines in the prints, which can be removed, but it just adds an extra step. But for SLA printing, it can print upwards of incredible 8K quality depending on your resin and your printer. It can print ultra fine smooth detail, making it amazing for miniature prints, characters and intricate details. It does require a lot more caution, setup and care than FDM printers. But in my opinion, the rewards are greater. But resin is toxic and will cause skin irritation, allergic reactions and even contact dermatitis if it comes in contact with your skin. And that is just the surface of it, so a lot more needs to be considered when it comes to resin printing. What printer should I buy? Well, that really depends on what you want to print. Printers vary in price depending on how big they are, how detailed they can be. My first printer was an Elegoo Mars Pro, and that was a fantastic beginner printer, as it pretty much was just a plug-and-play product. Then I upgraded to an Anycubic Mono X, which is a much larger printer, and that came with a much bigger learning curve. So I can't tell you what to buy, as it depends on what you want to print and what your budget is. But to me, the Elegoo Mars Pro was a great starter printer. What do I need in order to start printing? First off, a printer. But there are serious things you need to consider before getting into 3D printing. First off is safety. Because resin is toxic, your printer shouldn't be kept in your house. Realistically, you should have it in a shed, a workshop, or a garage. But if you don't have access to one of these, but still really want to print, it needs to be in a room you do not use. I still wouldn't fully recommend it, as resin printers do not belong in your house. Now, once you have a safe space for your printer, you need to make sure it's on a level surface. It sounds obvious, but the printer should be on a flat surface in order to print successfully. Also, it needs to be said that it needs to be in a safe place that is out of the way of children and pets. Next, and the most important factor is ventilation. The room you are printing in needs to be well ventilated. There needs to be a fume extractor to remove fumes from the printer whilst it prints. And as you can see with my printing enclosure, I have a ventilator extracting fumes from the top of the cabinet and either into a filter or out the window. Fumes are not just generated from the printer, but also from the post-print process in the cleanup and the curing. Along with ventilation, you need a decent respirator. Resin fumes are no joke, and you need a good respirator or mask to protect yourself from the fumes whilst handling uncured resin. Still on the topic of safety, we need to talk about PPE. You've got your printer set up, you've got your ventilation system up and running, respirator equipped, now you need to protect your hands. There are three types of gloves that you can buy to safely handle resin, latex, vinyl or nitrile. Latex and vinyl are the cheaper of the options out there, but nitrile gloves are what I use as they have the most hazardous chemical protection and are stronger but more expensive. Latex and vinyl gloves offer less protection for less time, especially when working with the cleaning solutions. So I recommend nitrile gloves. So we have covered the main safety points of printing. You've got your mask, your gloves, ventilation going, and you're ready for your first print. You now need to consider what resin to buy. There's loads of different brands and colors and types of resin out there. I stick with the standard Anycubic gray resin as I've had the best results with this. This will however be a personal preference, but I recommend this one. Now, the last thing to consider with your resin is temperature. One of the main reasons that prints fail is usually due to temperature fluctuation. Each brand of resin will have a recommended temperature that it works best at. It's often between sort of 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. This can prove tough if you have a printer in a garage or a shed, especially here in the UK when winter comes around. So you'll need to look into keeping your printer at a consistent heat to get better printing results. Now, I'll go into my heating setup a little later on in the video. 
One last big recommendation of mine is to purchase a screen protector for the LCD screen. This is similar to an iPad screen protector and just sits over the LCD screen below the resin vat. There are instances where the film on the resin vat, also called the FEP, can pierce and this results in a resin leakage. This happened to me and I didn't have a screen protector on. And if you get cured resin on your LCD screen, it can basically ruin it. If you have a screen protector get ruined, it's a super cheap and easy fix to replace it. It's a very expensive and laborious fix to replace a whole new screen. Believe me, I know. How do I set up my first print? Depending on what printer you buy, it will come with a USB stick and a recommended slicing software. What's a slicing software? Well, it's the software used to correctly set up a 3D file in order to print it. The main ones out there are Photon Workshop, Lychee and Chitterbox. Different people prefer different software for many different reasons. Speaking personally, I've always preferred to use Chitubox over the others just for its support systems, ease of use, user interface, and the fact that it has a great free version, but also a pro version too. Once you have your 3D file loaded in, often either between an OBJ or an STL file, you need to get adequate support set up. You'll get best results in printing if you angle your print, usually around a 45 degree angle and add supports. You can select an auto support function which will analyze all the points it detects supports will be needed. The heavier and denser the supports, the more likely the print won't fall or break, but the more likely you'll get marks left over on your print. You want to try and angle the model in a way where the supports will be mainly added to the parts that won't be on show or visible, as oftentimes you'll get marks left over on the model after removing the supports. This won't always be possible, but it's always worth trying as and when you can. You'll also need to hollow out your prints. It's not compulsory, but it's something I always do. Hollowing out your prints means using less resin and less printing time and less power to print. And also hollowed out models usually fail a lot less than solid ones. Once you've got it hollowed out, I usually do it around 1.2 to 1.5 thickness. You then need to add adequate drain holes, usually towards where the build plate is. This allows for resin to drain out and also relieves suction from the FEP when the build plate is coming down and lifting off. So you've now got your model supported. You now need to slice it in order to get it into the right format for the printer to read it. This is where the most technical part of the process comes in as you need to have the right settings dialed in to avoid printing failure. This is the question that gets asked on so many forums to get better prints and there are so many variables that there's no one setting that can be applied to all printers to make it work as a lot of factors will change the settings. The best thing you can do is check out this detailed spreadsheet that I've linked in the description which lists specific printers using specific resins and you can see what settings people have got the best results from. Running the RERF test on your printer will help you dial in your correct settings before you attempt your first proper print. And you can check out this video here, which goes into great detailing about the RERF testing. So you've got your settings dialed in, you've ran a successful test, and you've just printed your first mini. What do you do now? First up, you detach the print from the build plate using a scraper, which usually should be supplied with your printer. Now you need to clean and cure your print. There are lots of options with this and the most popular cleaning solution is IPA, which isn't Indian pale ale, but isopropyl alcohol, which is also rubbing alcohol. This will wash off any leftover residue from the print. You'll need to wear all your PPE during this process to not inhale resin fumes or touch any uncured resin. Now I use a wash and cure station to wash my prints, but you can very easily put the IPA in a secure Tupperware, pop your print in and give it a good shake and a swirl for a couple minutes and that should clean it. Once clean, you need to remove your supports and then finally cure your model. As a personal preference, I like to remove the supports before curing the model as it's less likely to leave marks doing it this way round. So depending how strong the supports are and how many you have, they can just break right off, but if they're tougher, you'll need to use little cutters. And a little tip that I learned is, if you dip the supports in some warm to hot water, the supports will just fall off as the resin becomes extremely soft in the heat. So you've come to the final stage, curing. Curing is just a process of exposed UV light hardening the resin and turning it from a soft flexible material into a solid hard one. You can do this under the UV lights in the wash and cure station or leave it out in the sun to cure. Once the resin has cured it will feel hard and solid and is now safe to be handled. Congrats on your first successful print! What can I do to make the printing process easier? There are lots of tips and tricks that I've learned and accessories that I've printed over the last year or so that have helped me get better results in printing. 
The main one is a heating system. As mentioned before, you need the printer to be consistently heated so the resin temperature doesn't fluctuate. In my printer, I've installed a mini heater here, which sits in this little holder that I've printed with an FDM printer. This printer is attached to a terrarium thermometer, which is set to 25 degrees. When it goes over the 25 degree threshold, the heat shuts off, and when it goes below 25 degrees, the heat comes back on. This means the temperature mainly sits around the 25 degree mark. This has been the main thing that has reduced printing failures for me. You can click the link in the top right to check out the video on setting up this heater thermometer setup. With this heating system, I've also printed these spacing brackets which sit underneath the lid and screw into the printer. This means that the wires have a space to go under the lid and into the heater so I can keep the lid in place and retain the heat. All this super useful stuff is on Thingiverse and I'll leave a link in the description to all these things plus the heater and the thermometer as well. Another thing I printed is a drip bracket. Once the print has finished, I put this build plate into the drip bracket and attach the bracket back onto the printer, and I'll leave it for a little while. This allows all the excess resin to drain and drip off of the model into the resin vat, which saves on wastage and saves on cleanup. Next up is a couple things for post-cure cleanup. I sometimes use a Dremel, which is an automatic handheld sanding machine. This helps sand down and smooth out any nasty little leftover parts from the support marks and get an overall smoother print. This should be done outside with a respirator so as not to inhale any resin particles. You can also use old toothbrushes to clean up the model and just brush off any excess from them. And with that, that is everything that I can think of when it comes to 3D printing. When it comes to resin printing, the main thing is trial and error, as there are so many variables to consider. My advice would be to join a 3D printing support forum and Facebook groups, as there are super helpful experts who can offer advice and give support on troubleshooting. So maybe join a couple groups and get accustomed to what people are saying and the language they're using. The main takeaways from this are, do you have a safe space to print? preferably not in your house. Do you have access to good ventilation? Fumes are generated from both the printing process and the cleanup process, so ventilation is so, so key. Temperature is also very important to consider. Get the correct PPE before you begin, and for the love of God, put a screen protector on before you start printing. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you if you've been interested in getting into 3D printing, but have found it a bit daunting. As mentioned before, I've left links to all the equipment I use in the description below. And if you decide to buy any of the products listed and use the affiliate links I have, it will give me a little kickback so you'll be supporting the channel as you start your 3D journey. So thank you. And with that, I'll end this video here. Make sure to hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Drop a comment if you have any questions and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all next week.